Apple just released the same phone with a new name. Oh, sorry, that wasn't meant to be in the script. What? My nigga. <laughs> Apple just released the iPhone 15 and here are three reasons why you should buy it and three reasons why you should probably not. Let's dive in. So the first reason why you might want to buy this device is the new design. Now previously the base iPhone had this glossy finish on the back which attracts a lot of fingerprints and coupled with the fact that they also had these sharp edges they weren't really the best phones to hold without a case on it. But with the iPhone 15 Apple used the matte finish that they used on the pros and as you all know matte finish doesn't attract a lot of fingerprints and the edges are also a bit rounded so it makes it more comfortable to hold. Then to top it all off, Apple added the dynamic island to the base iPhone 15 which makes it look at least different here. Yeah? Unlike previous years where I could show you the iPhone 13 and iPhone 14 but you would almost barely tell a difference. Now the first reason not to buy is that it has the same processor as the iPhone 14 Pro and that's just a way better device. Both the 15 and 14 Pro are using the same A16 Bionic chip and though yes on Apple's website the 14 Pro is still at $1000, if you go to eBay you can find the 14 Pro for just $50 more than the base 15 and $50 less than the 15 Plus. Also if you can wait like a month or so and I'm pretty sure that it will be less than the 14 while still being a better device overall. So if you can wait, why not? But still another reason why you might want to buy the 14 is the new 48 megapixel main camera. Now we all saw this coming here, yeah? there's only a limit to what you can do with a 12 megapixel sensor which is also the reason why every flagship Android device has at least a 50 megapixel main camera and Apple has just realized this here, yeah? the same way they realized that type C is the way to go for now but we'll talk about that later on. Now they also tested the 48 megapixel main camera on the pro iPhones last year and it's great to see them on the base iPhone 15. This year, it enables better low light performance, more details, and so on. But one major turn off with this device is the display. Now, don't get me wrong, the display on the iPhone 15 is not a bad display at all. I mean, it's a 6.1 inch Full HD Plus Super Retina XDR OLED display, which has rich colors and also supports HDR10, Dolby Vision, and it also has 1000 nits of normal brightness levels and up to 2000 nits of peak brightness levels. That's just crazy. So, it can get really bright, and you have absolutely no problem looking at this display even under direct sun. Light. The problem is that it's a 60 hertz display. I I I'm I'm totally disappointed. You know, like in 2023, 120 hertz is no more a luxury feature or something you keep to only your exclusive devices or something you worry about when getting a device. 120 hertz is a base requirement in 2023. Like anyone who has ever used a 120 hertz device will definitely tell you that it's not something you can overlook. And considering the fact that this device costs 800 dollars and there are 300 dollar Androids that have 120 hertz, even the iPhone 13 Pro from two years ago that costs like 650 dollars right now has 120 hertz and the new iphone 15 doesn't so yeah this is something you just cannot ignore except if you've not used a 120 hertz device before if not then you'll probably not have any problem with this display now the last reason which is usb type c is both a reason to buy and a reason not to buy as weird as that sound so let me explain now the reason to buy is that the new iphones come with the usb type c charging port and also the new airpods this is good news i mean type c is now like a generally accepted port here yeah? laptops tablets ipads androids Almost any rechargeable device you can think of in 2023 all use Type-C charging cables. So now I'm seeing it on the new iPhone 15 is great. I mean, you can buy one Type-C cord and use it to charge all your devices. Okay. Good. Now the reason not to buy is that Apple restricted the data transfer speeds on the base iPhone 15 because they used USB 2.0 as opposed to the industry standard USB 3.1 which they use only on their pro iPhone. The USB 3.1 on the pros have data transfer speeds of up to 10 GB per second here. Yeah? Now the USB 2.0 on the iPhone 15 has data transfer speeds of just 450 MB per second. And the crazy part is that that's the same speed that the lightning port has so this is basically a lightning port in a new look. Now, why did they do this? Well, I don't know. Maybe so that you can just spend more money and buy the pros because they are just the better devices, like way better devices. Maybe, I don't know. Anyways, tell me what you think about the new iPhone 15s down in the comment section. And with that being said, I'll see you next time. Yeah, cut.